Um, so just to preface this briefly, this is my um, second Bardic Madness, but this is my first time telling a story in persona. So yeah, be, be kind. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so despite the fact that my family comes from County Sligo, and I studied music in Dublin, and I've traveled all around the world, and I seem to have a dress on from several centuries before I was born, this story comes to you from the County of Ulster where I have several cousins who are rather combative, but seem to get a little touchy whenever things get too heated. So I'm here to tell you why. Once upon a time, as all stories go, there was a maiden with the reddest hair that you could ever wish to see and the brightest eyes that shine like the emeralds you find. And her name was Maka. Of the red hair, because we are not very imaginative people. So, <laughs> Maka was a goddess. And as goddesses are wont to do, she was taking a walk along the beach one day when she finds a castle. And something in her heart draws her to this castle and she finds herself inside, where live a man and his two young sons. She's moved entirely by her heart, so without a single solitary word, she stokes the hearth fire and she starts to cook them a meal, where before they had merely stale bread and old food and a very unkempt and dirty house because before then the husband the man's wife had passed away so they had lived in filth because you know clearly there was not a woman to take care of things around so silently she stokes the hearth fire and she creates a stew and then she serves it to them all wordlessly with the man and the two sons not saying a word either for fear that this vision would disappear Silently they ate this meal, and silently she clears it away, and silently they go about their day, and silently she travels up to the man's bedchambers and lays with him as a wife would lay with a husband. So the next day we come to find the man discovers that the woman does indeed have a voice, and Maka speaks to him and said, I am Maka, and I have decided that you are to be my husband. And I will stay with you and I will be your wife for as long as you will have me with one condition. You must not tell anyone who I am. And so they lived very happily for a little while. Because again, as all things are cyclical, it came to pass that the man's attendance was required at a festival called by the king of Ulster himself. So he kisses his wife Maka of the red hair on the cheek and she admonishes him again do not tell anyone who I am. So he goes. And he goes to this festival, and everything is quite lovely for a while, and he imbibes, and he imbibes a bit more, until eventually we come to the chariot races of the day. Well, knowing, of course, that the king, being the king of Ulster, has the best horses in the land, um, the chariot races are happening. So at this point, the king is talking about how his horse is the finest bred in the land and how they are the quickest and no one can outrun them when this foolish husband of Makas speaks up from the back. My wife can outrun any of these horses. Everything goes silent. And you hear the king speak, then bring her here. The husband, suddenly realizing what a terrible and foolish mistake this was, immediately retracts his, Oh, no, I'm so sorry, no. Certainly your horses are faster than my wife, I am so sorry. But the king says not another word to that husband, but instead sends his guards for Maka. Now, Maka, having lived with this man as her husband for several months, is pregnant. So... The guards arrive at her home and she greets them as any gentle wife would. And they say, your presence is required for you must race against the king's horses. She knows immediately what the husband has done and tries to beg, please, I'm not in a condition to race, I'm pregnant. I can't possibly race against these horses. But the guards tell Maka that they will kill her husband if she does not go. And so she goes. And so she lines up with these horses on this dusty track with all of these people to watch her great shame as she needs to race against these horses. And so she races. And she wins. 
She crosses the finish line and she falls to the ground with a great cry and there gives birth to twins. And with that birth, with her great cry and her final dying breath, she curses the men of Ulster for nine times nine generations to suffer the pains of labor whenever their country is in need. And so that is the story of my dumb cousins up in Ulster. Ha, ha, ha.